Welcome, um, good people of geometry, to 8.4, part 2. Um, you are very, very close to the end of the, of the unit. Um, so congratulations on your work so far. Um, this kind of puts together um, a few different ideas that we've talked about previously. So, so I want you to remember that when you see the term regular, okay, regular means something very, very specific in geometry. And what it means is two things. One, um, if I have a regular polygon, that means all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. Okay, so all sides are congruent, all angles are congruent. So if we considered what would be a regular quadrilateral, a regular four-sided figure, well, that would have to be a square because the square is the only one where all sides are equal and all angles are equal. Okay, so that would be a regular polygon. So you're talking about the, the most ideal type of polygon you can work with. So now, as we look, we have a regular pentagon, so five sides, um, inscribed into circle P. Okay, so now, a couple things to, to make note of here. I have what's called an apothem, and the apothem is PF. Okay, and basically the apothem is from the center to the middle of one side of the shape. Okay, so it's to the middle of the one side of the shape. So if I look, PF goes to the middle of this triangle. Now my central angle is this, here. My central angle would be a, P, B. Okay, that would be considered my central angle right here. That's it. That's going to be considered my central angle because it starts at the center. And if you think back to the circles unit, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what we've talked about before. Okay, so let me get into this here. So if we have a square inscribed into a circle K, the center is going to be K. My radius could be KG or KH. My apothem would be KL. My central angle would be HKG. Okay, this entire thing right here. Now, when you look at the measure of the central angle, so here's where you got to kind of think a little bit. How big is this central angle? Well, if I extend this out, I extend this out, this would be four central angles. Okay, one, two, three, four. I would have four central angles there. Four central angles, and they're all equal. So I know that a circle has got to be 360 degrees. And I know I've got four equal ones. So that means each one of these is going to be 90 degrees. So all I do is take 360 divided by the number of sides, and that will give me, not number of sides, sorry, Number of, well, number of sides would work. Sorry, let me rephrase. Number of sides would work. Um, and that will give me my central angle. So here, we kind of up the stakes a little bit. We go to a hexagon. So six sides. So my center is R. My radius would be RK or RL. My apothem would be RS. My central angle would be KRL. And... The measure of the central angle, if I kind of extend this out, if I go here, here, and here, what, what's that going to be? Well, these are all congruent because it's a regular hexagon. So I'm going to take 360 divided by 6 and get 60 degrees as the measure of my central angle. Okay, so far so good. I'm set, don't worry, I'm setting you up to take the next step, but this, this is a good place to start. So now, we're trying to find the area of this hexagon with side lengths of five. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. If you noticed on the previous one, I extended the diagonals all the way across. 
And what I did was I created six triangles. Okay, and you'll do this with every regular shape. You can cut it up into triangles. Now, because it's regular, okay, all sides, all angles, congruent, okay, this is the only way this works. Um, I create six congruent triangles, and I know my central angle. So it would be 360 divided by 6. So each one of these things is going to be 60. Okay, so um, I know the side lengths are five. And I gotta figure out the area. Okay, so how can I do that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna find the area of one triangle. And two, I'm going to multiply it by 6 because I have 6 triangles. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. So, so let's consider one triangle. Okay, I know that this is 60. I know that this is 5. This ends up being an equilateral triangle because these two are equal. That makes this equal. So all three sides are 5. So now I've got to figure out the area. Now, I will warn you, here's what the people who will do this wrong will do. People who will do this wrong will say, oh, it's 5 times 5 divided by 2, so it's 12.5. I'm done. Big red flag, don't do that. I need to figure out my height. So I need to figure out this length right here. I need to figure out my height. Now, when I drop this line... I cut this in half. Okay, so instead of five, it becomes two and a half and two and a half. I also split this angle, so that becomes 30 and 30. So now I can make, I can actually cut this up again, and, and let's just kind of see what I have. So I've got this is 30. This is 90, this is 60, this is two and a half. I want this height. So now I could do special right triangles. I feel like um, trig is gonna be better suited for that. So I'm gonna take the tangent of 60 and that will equal H over 2.5. Remember opposite over adjacent. So H is gonna be equal to 2.5 times the tangent of 60 which is nothing more than four point three three. Okay, so now what did I create? What did I find here? Well, I figured out that that is my height. Why is that important? That's important because once I figure out my height, I can figure out the area of this triangle. So the area of this triangle, the whole thing, the whole base is five. The height is 4.33, so the area of one triangle is going to be 1 half times 5 times 4.33. So the area of one triangle is 10.82, or 83, but how many triangles do I have? I've got 6, so I need to multiply that by 6. To get my answer. So what did I do? I figured out the area of one triangle. However I needed to do it. Um, and then multiplied it by six. Alright. Let's go on to the next one. So. The area of a regular polygon is actually a shortcut would be the product means multiplication. So you need one half of the product of the apothem, A, and the perimeter. So a shortcut to figuring out the area of the whole thing 
is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. And all that does is, is, is does the same thing we've been talking about so far, but it just puts it all into one step. All right, this, this is like your height of a triangle, okay? But instead of having one base and then multiplying it by five, you're just taking this whole thing, all right, and, and doing all of it. So this is like your base times your number of sides. And if you don't 100% understand what I'm doing, that's fine, okay, for right now. Just realize that all this is doing is combining this step, okay? That's all it's doing. So we, I told you before, one half times, you know, one half times base times height for one triangle, then multiply it by number of sides. That will work, okay, or not multiply it by number of sides. I'm, I'm sorry, multiply it by number of triangles. That will give you your answer. That will work every single time. Okay, so let's look. Find the area of a regular triangle. Okay, so regular triangle, all 60, all this way. So now I could figure this out because it's a triangle. I could use Heron's theorem. Okay, I could absolutely do that. Four plus four plus four divided by two is six. Okay, then you take the square root, six times six minus four times six minus four times six minus four. So six times two times two times two is gonna be the square root of 48 which will be 6.93. Okay, I'm perfectly fine to do that. Okay, what I might also consider is from my center, realize I create three triangles, okay? So that's 60 right there. No, nope, hold on, that's not 60, what am I doing? That's gonna be 120, 30, and 30, and I know that my base is four, so that's 30. Then I split it into 60, so I kind of drop my height, so that makes this two, and I need to figure out my height. So once again, I'll take the tangent of 30 equals h over two. So my height ends up being 1.155. So four times that answer divided by two. Okay, that's the area of one triangle. Then we'll multiply it by three. And I end up getting 6.93, which is what matches up. So if you remember Heron's theorem and you can find that, that's actually not a bad way to figure out that area. It's actually not a bad way to figure out the, that area. It can save you work. So here, find the area of a regular pentagon. Now, we cannot say definitively that if this is 10, that this one is 10. Okay, a lot of kids make that mistake. And with some cases you can. If it would be a hexagon, yes, you can do that. But what I can say is that if this is 10, PQ is also 10. So now let's look at this. We got to figure out the area of the whole thing. So I've got, I end up making five triangles. Let's look. That's 10. That's 10. My central angle is going to be 360 divided by 5, which is going to be 72. So now, draw a little bigger. And if I drop this down, 72 gets split into 36, 36. So I take 72 divided by 2, and I get 36. I need to figure out this height right here. I actually need to figure out both. I actually need to figure out this and this. So I need to use some trig here. I need to use some right triangle trig. So if I take the sine of 36, that will give me that distance. If I take the cosine of the 36, that will give me my height. 
So my distance ends up equaling 5.88. And then my height becomes 0.8.09. Okay, and this is just calculator mashing. Okay, this is multiply both sides by 10. Let the calculator do the legwork. So now, but remember, that only represents this distance. It's nice that the height gives me that. That's good. But that only gives me part of the distance. That's why I'm like saying, hey, that's 5.88. What's the whole thing going to be then? Well, if I double that, that whole thing is going to be 11.76. So now I've got my base. I've got my height. My height is this 8.09. So I'm going to take 11.76 times 8.09 divided by 2. So I get 47.5692. Now, that's for one triangle. I need five triangles. So I'm going to multiply it by 5. So that answer becomes 237. 0.846 inches squared. Now this is a great, this is a great review of trig, and that's why I, I had you guys look at that special right triangle and trig review before we got here. Okay, find the area of a regular hect octagon here. So we have octagons. So we're looking at eight sides. Okay, so if I kind of consider, they give me. They give me a height here, don't they? They give me an opossum. So I end up with eight triangles. So if I take 360 divided by eight, I get 45. So that's what each central angle is. But now I know that this height is eight. So that splits and this becomes 22 and a half. This becomes 22 and a half. So now if I like just take that right side. So this is 22.5. This is eight. I need to figure out this length down here. So that's my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. So I want tangent. So I want 22.5. That's really bad. Let me rewrite that. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. So that's going to be... 3.137. That represents this length right here. I need to double it to get 6.627, and that will represent this whole thing. So now I take the 6.627 times 8 and divide it by 2. Why? Because that gives me this whole triangle, 26.51. Now I multiply it by 8 to get the whole thing. So that'll be 212.08 inches squared. And that's my answer. That's my answer. Does this take a few steps? Absolutely. Does it take some practice? Absolutely. But you got to kind of be able to work your way through these things. Okay. So now we're back to a pentagon. So five sides, five triangles. Um, if you don't remember, 360 divided by 5 is going to be 72. So when I divide that by 2, it gets split into 36. So if I look at just this triangle... Okay, I can say that's 9, but it's a pentagon, so I don't know what the base and the other one are. So I want my X and I want the Y. So this is where opposite 
and this is adjacent. This is where I need to use two. So I need to use two from Sokotoa. I'm going to use sine and cosine because I know my hypotenuse. So the sine of 36 is x over 9, and the cosine of 36 is y over 9, but that's my height. So sine of 36 times 9 is 5.29. Cosine of 36 times 9 is going to be 7.28. So now remember, that's what x equals, that's what this length equals here, and this is what y equals, which is my height. Okay, so this is my height over here. Now, to get this whole length, I'm going to double this to 10.58. I'm going to multiply it by that and divide by 2, and get 38.5112. Now, that's one triangle. If it's a pentagon, there's five triangles. So that's going to be 192.556 centimeters squared. Oh, yeah, these take some time. These take some practice. So be patient and kind of be able to break this down into triangles and then work back. All right, so take some time. I don't think the assignment's too long. Come talk to me with questions and we can walk through some things. Thank you.